Welcome to the Tuesday, July 11th, 2023, regular closed session meeting of the EBMUD Board of Directors. Director April Chan is absent and excused, and the board will not consider item one, Director Chan's request to appear remotely. I, President Katz, am participating via teleconference. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Director Coleman. Present. Director Lenny. Here. Director McIntosh. Here. Director Patterson. Present. Director Young. Here. President Katz. Here. We move to public comment. If members of the public are online and wish to make public comment, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Comments on non-agenda items will be heard at the beginning of the meeting. Comments on agenda items will be heard also now when the item is up for consideration. Madam Secretary, are there any hands for public comment? We have one hand for public comment. Looks like this is George Cleveland. Just give me one moment while I um, set the mics. Okay. George, I believe that's you. If you can unmute your mic. I, I did. Can you hear me? Yes. And your three minutes will start now. Okay, two things. The first thing, usually when the board is uh, members appearing remotely, they tell us where they are. I mean, that's what Director Linney did when he was in Italy. Um, the, the, sec the second thing, um, it's in my role of the 2019 Chief Steward. It's kind of a, how would I put this? A request for help. Um, we have one of our positions in ISD. It's kind of a niche position dealing with some Oracle-based things. It's a open continuous uh, job opening that's been unfilled since before the pandemic. And we know that uh, recruitment and classification and ISD management have been trying hard, um, but I'm bringing this to the group's attention to perhaps cast a wider net and in, in some, getting some ideas on how to fill this position. It, it's, it's a challenging job um, and the recruitment's um, haven't gone as well as expected. And so I'm just putting this out there to say to other folks that, hey, maybe you can uh, chime in and figure out, maybe get some ideas on what we can do to solve this position. I believe the work's being done. It's just being distributed amongst other folks who have their own full plates of work to do. So we're just looking for some help. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cleveland. And uh, yes, as noted on the agenda, I'm participating uh, for closed session only from the, uh, the district's uh, remote office in Sacramento. Okay. One moment. Madam Secretary, are there any other hands for public comment online? There are no hands online for public comment. I do have two cards for um, speakers in the audience. And the first speaker is Lana Coleman and the second speaker is Yvette Rivera. And I believe you were provided with documents from Lana Coleman or emailed to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, right. Lana Coleman, please proceed. Thank yeah. you. So You're the packet that you have uh, contains my comments for this morning as well as at 1.15. Um, this morning, I'm going to address the attachments, which is pages 3 through 12. My comments are on pages 13 and 14. So it's really just a page and a half, I have to say, even though there are all those pages. Then this afternoon, I really want more employees to hear what I have to say in my statement, um, and, and that's pages one and two of the packet. So, first attachment, page three. This describes the power of the retirement board in writing. It can make rules, modify benefits. It determines the outcome where there is an issue. It says it is the sole authority. In our case, the general counsel decided to be the sole authority. And we were sent to court. We were denied due process to meet with the retirement board. We didn't know that was what we were supposed to do when we were told we had to go to court. Um, we were told, and Derek, I believe it's a direct quote, the district is finished talking to you. The second attachment from late 2022, page four. The district filed, yet a almost a year later, a court document misrepresenting that the retirement board had determined the pending question on reciprocity. This is not true, as I said. It also says that CalPERS retirement guide is relevant because it corroborates the retirement board's determination. False again. The CalPERS retirement gu guide covers CalPERS benefits and is irrelevant, unrelated to East Bay Mud's definition of recro reciprocity. An investigation is warranted. 
The third attachment, page five, Joe Damus, unless he worked for 90 years, he had overlapping service, didn't he? This is from Transparent California. John remembered Joe, but Joe wouldn't say too much because he was afraid he was going to lose his benefit when he said he got an exception to the ordinance, which is exactly what he told John. And he said he got an exception to the ordinance because Jerry Gilbert got an exception to the ordinance. So there are more than one exceptions to the ordinance in the past. And interestingly, Derek told us they could not even consider an exception for a director because they'd never done it for an employee. We made very clear that this had been done. And Clifford, how many times did we ask you for the Joe Damus information? It's a, it's a rhetorical question, don't worry. It's all documented how many times we asked for it. And every time we asked, you promised you would give it to us. But we never received it. So I have 30 seconds. Well, I'm not going to get through all the attachments. There's a lot I wish I could say. But you know, I've only been offered the opportunity to speak to you in three-minute snippets. Um, it doesn't really get across all of this information. Um, I've got to point out the, the email from Lisa, who works here, saying, John Coleman established reciprocity, and he's entitled to a much bigger retirement. You know what? Even after she wrote that email that's in here, she told us that the meetings must never have happened. I'm out of time. You can review these. Um, all the lies, falsehoods, misrepresentations of the district are included, and they're worthy of your attention. They're worthy of an investigation, President Katz. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Coleman. And I did mention that I am preparing a written response. You're, uh, we're still reviewing your comments. and uh, Yeah, you said that last time. So I guess it's is in the mail, the checks in the mail. Kind of. we're, we're still reviewing it. Uh, if you have those written materials, please provide them to the district secretary. OK, so thank you. That. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please uh, call the next name. Next, we have Yvette Rivera. <clears throat> oh, my God. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time collecting myself after hearing everything that Lana Coleman just said. What? Deception by the district? Oh, how unusual. <laughs> Um, I w went to earlier board meetings, and one of the documents, or I gave board members documents, and the only board member that didn't get the documents that I passed out at two previous meetings was Marguerite Young. And hopefully, she's getting that passed to her right now. Um, one of the most important documents that I uh, gave to board members this morning was the proposed judgment to Alex C., the judge for the Saji Pearson Ario Bland case. I went to the planning meeting this morning and told the, the directors present that they better get to planning on paying Saji Pearson Ario Bland those $8 million because it looks like, it, it looks like that day is a coming and it looks like there's going to be compounded interest for every t day that uh, the district waits on paying that up. The other thing that I gave the district was the excerpt from the Jan Duffer report. The reason why I gave it to you again is because I received a meeting request yesterday from my uh, superintendent, David Carlson, telling me that I have a counseling uh, meeting that I need to go to tomorrow morning with, with Tony Montano. They won't tell me what I'm being counseled over. I sent you this morning that email telling them that I want union rep, that, you know, are they counseling me again for speaking to the board, for maybe relaying an email about a safety issue to the board? I don't know, but maybe they'll tell me tomorrow. Um, I just want to mention they have counseled, they have met with me in the past and never have given me a counseling memo after I told them that I was acting in concerted activity for other employees and myself. The last thing I want to say is I spoke at the HR committee meeting, and that data that was presented was pretty pathetic, once again. And I hope that the district calls in someone to review the practices at East Bay Mud, because nothing is changing, not a thing. But. Um, Maybe the board needs to get carpentry to put in some uh, sand pits in front of your chairs so you can bury your head in those 
sand pits whenever any time somebody brings up a legitimate concern. Thank you. I yield. Thank you. Madam Secretary, are there any other members of the public for public comment? We have no further public comment. Okay. Then we will now convene to close conference room eight to discuss closed session agenda items. We are scheduled to return for the regular meeting at 1.15 p.m. Welcome to the Tuesday, July 11th, 2023, general regular business meeting of the EDMED Board of Directors. We will receive reports from this morning's planning and legislative human resources committees under item 14. In accordance with government code 54953 at SEC, Director April Chan sent notification to the board president, the general manager, and secretary of the district via email of the need to participate in today's regular meeting from a remote location for just cause. In accordance with the government code section 54953 at SEC, Director Chan will provide a general description of the circumstances relating to the need to appear remotely in today's regular meeting. Director Chan. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so referring to California Code 54953F2A, there are special circumstances in which I cannot disclose where I am. Um, first of all, let me greet you, um, hailing from Habaroni, uh, Botswana. But, um, and I am in a hotel room, but I cannot disclose my location due to security reasons. Uh, there are, I am representing the United States in a uh, delegation to Africa. And there, the entire American delegation is at this hotel as well as, well as foreign dignitaries that are attending the conference. Um, there are senior government officials, U.S. officials staying here. Um, and, and just to put a fine point on this, I, I don't know for sure who's staying at this hotel, but there are five African presidents and two prime ministers attending this summit. So I do feel that there is a security concern. Also wanting to let you know that nobody over 18 is in my room. And again, wanting to kindly ask for your permission to participate in this meeting. In light of the governmental business uh, communicated by Director Chan, is there a motion and a second to approve Director Chan? If you so remember. moved. Second. Moved by uh, Vice President McIntosh and seconded by Director Coleman. All those in favor, uh, we will need a roll call. Yes. Oh, that's right. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Lenny? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. And this is our first time using this government code section, so I have been provided some language uh, for Director Chan in accordance with government code section 54953FC-F2C. You will need to keep your audio open and camera on at all times while appearing remotely, accordingly in accordance with government code section 54953F2B. You will uh, need to disclose when any, uh, you have already disclosed whether any individual over the age of 18 is present in the room with you at any time during the remote meeting and describe the general nature of your relationship with the individual. And uh, that, uh, that brings us to roll call. Um, uh, Madam Secretary. Director Chan? Present. Director Coleman? Present. Director Lenny? Here. Director McIntosh? Here. Director Patterson? Present. Director Young? Here. President Katz? Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are no announcements from closed session. We move to public comment. If members of the public are online and wish to speak on agenda or non-agenda items, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Comments on non-agenda items will be heard now, and comments on agenda items will be heard when the item is up for consideration. Uh, Madam Secretary, are there any public comments online? I have one hand for public comment. Let me just hit these mics. 
And I'll provide some instructions. When prompted, please state your name, affiliation, if applicable, and topic. Please refrain from providing personal information such as addresses or phone numbers during public comment. If we need this information, we will have you contact staff. The secretary will call each speaker in the order received. Each speaker is allotted three minutes to speak. However, I have the discretion to amend this time based on the number of speakers. The secretary will track time and inform each speaker when the allotted time has concluded. We'll take the online comment first, and then I have three speaker cards. Madam Secretary. Phone number ending 1225, you should be able to unmute your mic. Good afternoon. afternoon. Uh, Heinrich Albert with Sierra Club. Is uh, this... I'd like to speak to you. Go ahead, Hello? Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Albert. I need to know if it's on an agenda or non-agenda item. Non-agenda item. Okay. Your three minutes will start now. Thank you. I want to speak with you uh, about the system of California water rights. Uh, and, and this refers to a letter that I sent to members of the board yesterday. Our existing system of water rights do not adequately protect our public trust water resources. And as a result, our people and our natural environment suffer. Our most senior water rights were unavailable to tribes or people of color. So might better be called water theft rather than water rights. Even the existing water rights system is inadequately documented and violations are rarely detected and even more rarely enforced. The blatantly illegal diversions in August of 2022 by the Shasta River Water Association decimated salmon populations in the river and served as a public reminder of the widespread scoff law attitude among many irrigation districts and water agencies. The state water board had issued a curtailment order but because their enforcement powers are so slow to move and so weak, the irrigation district proceeded with their diversions anyway and accepted the trivial fine as a minor cost of doing business. This year's legislative session saw three bills introduced to try to remedy some of these problems. SB 389, Surface Water Rights Verification, AB 460, interim relief, and that is the bill which is now a two-year bill. I, I made a mistake in the letter I sent out yesterday, my apologies. And lastly, AB 1337, fair regulation of water rights. I was very disappointed to see that last month the board had voted to support an opposed and less amended position on AB 460 and AB 1337. This effectively endorses the status quo, which is unjust and environmentally destructive. I urge you to change your position to support. That will show your support for environmental justice and environmental responsibility. Furthermore, enactment of these bills will benefit East Bay Mud as reduced diversions by scoff law districts will leave our public trust water resources in a healthier and more sustainable state. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heinrich. And please stick around for the discussion on under item 11. I believe there are some nuances that relate to your concerns. Uh, Madam Secretary, are there any further comments online? No further comments online. You have two okay, well, speaker cards at your place. Yeah, we'll move to two speaker cards for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, the first item, uh, the first individual is Lana Coleman. I'll be referring to pages or presenting pages one and two from the booklet I gave you or the handout I gave this morning. I hope you allow me to finish. In addition to an investigation, I request that the board consider establishing a policy saying that the district will honor commitments to employees if they are made one, by proper internal experts, they're made two, going through the approved process, and number three, they're not found to be an error and corrected in a reasonable amount of time, and three years is not a reasonable amount of time. 
So in, in brief, you know that in 2018, we were told what um, retirement benefit would be. 2021, they said, oops, we made a mistake three years ago. Instead of $70,000 a year, um, we, it's 78% less, and it's $15,000 a year. And this was, of course, after I retired in that interim and bought a house. Um, John promised me the district would honor the promise. Here's his direct quote. The district won't screw us like that because it would be so wrong ethically and morally. <laughs> At no time would the district discuss with us the possibility of keeping that promise. The conversation about keeping it just couldn't, couldn't be had. And uh, John was, we, we, told, we were told we had to go to court, and John was warned of severe consequences if he talked about it with any one of you. My painful, prolonged court experience is still going, so I can't talk about that. But I want all the employees listening or in the room to beware of what the district will do to avoid keeping a promise. Um, and note whether this applies, whether it's a verbal promise or a written promise. You'll be very eager to go to court. The district will spend a lot of money paying an outside firm to defeat keeping the promise, forcing the employee to spend a lot of their retirement funds to do that too. You'll mislead, telling the employee you need the court to give permission to keep the promise, which is told, but instead you fight it. You will deny the, the employee due process, in our case, that was going to the retirement board. We were denied. You will include statements that are not true in your filings with the court. You will be uncooperative and refuse to share internal information that's not beneficial to your position. That's back to Clifford and Joe Damas. You will try to cover up and even deny the promises were ever made. Lisa from HR, if she's in the room. You may destroy evidence as documentation may suddenly disappear, HR again. You will stay silent and not, sh not share important new information. The new information given to Lisa in HR in November could have saved us our court filing in January, but she kept it to herself or to whomever else she gave it, they all decided to keep quiet. You will silence the employee or the beneficiary I hope you'll allow me to continue. You can see how yeah, far you, I have to go. If you can go. wrap up in about 15 seconds. Uh, all of these are important. The legal information you give differs from that that the FPPC gives. Um, again, uh, you, you leave me no other way to communicate with you than here, which is not the appropriate way, but I've not been offered any other. So again, the district should consider holding promises if they are made by the proper internal experts, the right ones, they're made through the approved process the employee is supposed to go through, and they're not found to be in error and corrected in some reasonable period of time and not three years later, um, because that's when they turn people's lives upside down, inside out, backwards. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Coleman. The next speaker is Yvette Rivera. I have a procedural question first. I just wanted to know if uh, Director April Chan was at the 11 o'clock meeting. No. No? Because 11, when you, which 11, you're talking about for public comment. I did, and I didn't see her name, her, her face on the screen. Was she denied her request? I, I'm just curious. No. Okay. No, she, was, she was absent and excused. Okay, thank you. I will be forwarding um, the uh, communications that I gave to the board, and, um, Part of that communication was the Saji Pierce, Ario Bland uh, attorney's request for a proposed judgment. I went to the public, I went to the uh, planning meeting this morning and told the planning committee me members that uh, they need to start planning paying up $8 million. I'll um, elaborate more on what I gave the rest of the board to April Chan in an email. But for right now, I want to play a YouTube section really quick, and then I'll close. This is basically to the whole board. I don't know how many millions of dollars of ratepayer money is going to be continued to be misused to defend ongoing civil rights lawsuits against East Bay Mud and its agents. <laughs> The expenditure of all of those funds reminds me of how the Catholic churches used parishioner funds 
to hire the best lawyers to protect their pedophiles. It's my opinion that East Bay Mud isn't any better when it uses ratepayer funds to protect its habitual misogynists, racists, and harassers. I know what my legacy is going to be. It's going to be the same as Ariel Bland and Saji Pierce's. We're women who stand up, who stood up to this system of discrimination, racism, and retaliation at East Bay Mud. After my comments this morning, Director Linney chose to say that East Bay Mud is committed to diversity, inclusion, etc. To that I say, Director Linney, you come from a position of power and privilege, and you espouse the district's propaganda and do not fully grasp the racism, discrimination, and misogyny that people of color and women at East Bay Mud are subjected to. I will be speaking about all of these civil rights cases at future board meetings, just to make sure that there's transparency and that the public knows. Thank you. Uh, so generally speaking, we don't uh, comment or try to answer uh, comments, public comments during this period because they're not uh, agendized. Uh, but I do feel compelled to be able to say or to say that East Bay Mud uh, takes all these kinds of uh, allegations very seriously um, and that we are committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, and doing what we can to foster uh, these values within the district's work environment. Uh, we've made a renewed commitment to that uh, in this past year uh, and we will do so going forward. I just want to say that when I looked at that video, I didn't realize that it was Craig Spencer sitting in that seat, and that it was likely him that gave you those talking points. When you presented him an award later, you said he, was, he represented what was good. What did you say? Good and right at the district. You should have said good and white. I yield. We move to the consent. I just want to say I stand by those comments that I made then. Thank you, Director Lane. I would like to pull something uh, from the consent calendar. Uh, y yes, we are moving to the consent calendar, Director Chan. Yes. Um, I really want to correct the minutes um, from the last meeting where it says, um, I, I did make a big deal out of saying that um, I will be not there present for the meeting because I will be working. I am working here on behalf of the State Department. What is in the minutes is, quote, Director Chan will be traveling. And I really want to make it clear, I am not here on vacation. Um, I am working really hard. I have 14-hour days, and I would never want um, anyone to think that I'm on vacation instead of at the meeting uh, present with the rest of you. Director Chan, I very much sympathize because I've uh, done the same. And uh, do you have a, a specific restating? I'm, I'm on page 14 of our packet, uh, which is the uh, page six of seven of the minutes. And under item, uh, item 16, director comments, would you like to substitute the word? Uh, I, I would suggest either traveling on business or uh, uh, working. You know, wh which, which word phrasing would you, do you believe summarizes what happened? Well, I mean, I think that we could put working. Um, well, no, that I'm traveling as an American dele delegate for the de U.S. Department of State. Okay. This is a very important initiative. I want my constituents to read this and to understand that um, I missed the meeting for a very important reason. Thank you for the correction. So uh, I will ask for a motion to approve amended minutes that uh, substitute that insert the language on page uh, six under item sixteen after the word traveling to state uh, as an American uh, delegate with the delegate. Department of State. So, uh, go ahead. For the U.S. Department of State. So. Based on what was stated at the board meeting, we didn't know what you were traveling for. That was not stated at the board meeting, which is why the minutes state traveling. We can say traveling for business, 
but there it was not that was not stated and i can go back and listen to the recording but that was not stated and so that's why that's I not think included it was, and i really i will go back and listen to it too but okay. i know that i did not leave it at director chan will be traveling i know that i made it a point to say i am not on vacation but this is working okay why why don't yeah, given no. that we need to reference the yeah, recording cool. you know why don't we postpone this uh item to the next you. meeting and and we'll um okay. the direction to staff is to include the maximum amount of information um and if there's any question about um that summary uh you can work with uh the secretary's office on, on that is that i appreciate that okay. and thank you Risha. You're all right welcome. uh so we will we will move we will uh uh, I will call for a motion to approve items two through eight on the consent calendar. I have two items I'd like to four. Okay, Director Coleman. Four and seven. Okay, uh, so the uh, I'm asking for a motion to approve items two through three, five through six, including six A and six B, and eight. And eight. And I'll make that motion. Excuse me, President Katz. You have a public comment on item six and seven. And that's from Eric Larson. Yeah, that's right. For that. um, so uh, we will exclude items 6A and 6B from the motion. So uh, Dir uh, Director Linney has moved the consent calendar as amended. Is there a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Okay, it's been seconded by uh, Director Coleman. And uh, apologies for the time lag, Director Chan. <laughs> uh, that is that is the way virtual works. Sometimes you don't get the second uh, on time. <laughs> but uh, I, we will um, give you an opportunity later. Uh, all those, any further comments on the consent calendar? Uh, all those in favor, roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Lenny? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz. Yes. We move to item four. Four. It's pretty simple for me on item four. It's doing great work on the McCullough I completely agree, but it, nowhere does it say in here that um, it went out to more to more than one bid. And normally it states that it goes out to a bid or it is very explicit why it couldn't go out to a bid because that entity is the only one who can do the work. And in this case, it doesn't say that on either. And I agree that we need to do the work, absolutely. But it does not say in here of having gone out to bid or the necessity of the Ford Construction Company is the only one who can do it. So um, and maybe I'm looking at something different here, Director Coleman. But under service provider selection, it does talk that this was a direct award um, based on their specialized experience conducting work within the lower McCollumy. And, and that's why it, this was a direct award. Okay, I, I read that part, but it, was anybody else able to do the work? I mean, they've been doing it for us for a number of years, and that's great, but could anybody else have done the work and perhaps at a less cost? We can, we can look at it next time, but you know, based on the staff's evaluation and working with purchasing the assessment, when we do a direct award, it's based on who we believe can actually do the work. I understand that. If, I just think we need to be very clear in the future of if it, if it can't go out to bid, why it can't go out to bid? It needs to be more clear in the uh, summary. Okay. And I'll move the item. Second. I'm moved by Director Coleman, seconded by Director Patterson. Any further discussion? Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz. Yes. Uh, we have items 6A, uh, 6B, 7A, and 7B on uh, uh, the, the next items. Uh, we, have a we have a public comment. Uh, I would suggest that we, uh, and that public comment is intended for both of those two items, so I would recommend that we just take that public comment first. Eric Larson. Thank you, President Katz, board members, and General Manager Chan. Uh, it is important for me as president of Ask Me Local 444 to report uh, to you on uh, success. As, uh, and I wanted to report here uh, that uh, uh, we have had an effective partnership with management. Uh, we have reduced contracting out of saw cutting services.
from annual awards over a million dollars four and five years ago, down to $850,000 two years ago, down to 765,000 last year, and uh, management are just requesting 650,000 this year. All the while, production quotas have gone up. We did, we did this by bringing the work in-house. First, through a, a limited term pilot program using two limited term paving rakers to do in-house saw cutting, providing better resource management and coordination with union labor. And we showed uh, such a benefit that those limited term positions have been made uh, permanent positions uh, in this budget cycle. And that's how we get this work done. And we thank you. Item seven, similarly, has not increased. Welder positions have been funded and filled, and uh, we do not object to contracting out uh, those uh, intermittent uh, uh, services for uh, peak workload. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that uh, information about progress. And uh, we didn't have, Director Comey, you didn't remove item six, correct? I did not. Okay, so um, is there a motion to approve item 6A and 6B? Also move. Yeah. Moved by Director Linney, seconded by Director Patterson. All those in favor, uh, we'll roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. Uh, we move to item seven, Director Coleman. Yeah, I just, I, I talked to Clifford about this uh, yesterday. Um, I know if you go down into the contract equity side, you can see how much money we're going to spend, $250,000, uh, to continue this work. And I know 444 is in support of the work. I just wish in the recommended action or in the summary going forward that we're much more clear as the money is, it's not new money, one, and how it, and where it's coming from. It's, I had to, again, no, I didn't have to dig, but I had to look through the program summary to determine how much money it was going to be. Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that with us. We did look into this, and it doesn't happen often that we bring a contract and just extend the time but not add dollars. There were a couple of instances that we found, and we did include that in the discussion. So moving forward, we'll include that information in the discussion, not have you have to go to the contract equity documents. Thank you. I'll move the item. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, I will second. I will recognize Director Chan on this one. Uh, and I, uh, it's been moved by Director Coleman and seconded by Director Chan. All those in favor or opposed, roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. Items 9.1 to 9.3 involve a public hearing. Uh, we will conduct that public hearing and take actions related to the transfer of delinquent EBMUD charges to the Alameda and Contra Costa counties 2023 to 2024 property tax rules. The public hearing is now open. This is a public hearing to consider objections and protests to the general manager's report to transfer delinquent EBMUD charges to the 2023 to 2024 property tax rules. If there is anyone present regarding this item, staff is located outside the boardroom and can assist you with payment arrangements and provide information related to the delinquent charges. If there are speakers online with questions or require assistance, please contact the Lean Work Group at 510-287-0612 for assistance. Again, that number is 510 510- Two eight seven zero six one zero. We will now hear from the public. Please do not provide identifying information such as address or phone number. If this information is needed after your comments, you will be directed to contact staff. Is there anyone in attendance that wishes to object or protest the actions being considered by the board? Madam Secretary, are there any speakers online? There are no speakers online. Then may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Moved by Director Patterson. Second. Second. Seconded by Vice President McIntosh. Uh, we will have a roll call vote to close the public hearing. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. 
Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. The public hearing is now closed. We can now move to consider items 9.2 and 9.3. Oh. And we can cast uh, both items in, in one motion. Item 9.2 is to adopt the general manager's report dated June 13th, 2023, and authorize the general manager to exclude from the report any affected parcels or amounts as appropriate, including those that the district receives payment for on or before August 10th, 2023, the date in which the report will be sent to Alameda and Contra Costa counties. And item 9.3 is to authorize the transfer of delinquent EBMA charges to the Alameda and Contra Costa counties 2023 to 2024 property tax rolls. Uh, uh, may I have a motion and a second to approve items 9.2 and 9.3? So moved. Second. Moved by Director Patterson and seconded by Vice President McIntosh. And I'll, I'll just add that this is uh, what allows EBMA to uh, maintain our uh, uh, property tax uh, or maintain our, our, our revenue collection and uh, keep the water on. Uh, and, and this has uh, been a very successful program over the years. Uh, I will call the question. Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Lenny? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. The item passes. We will now move to agenda items 10.1 and 10.2A through 10.2C to conduct a public hearing and take actions pursuant to Health and Safety Code Section 5473 at SEC related to the collection of the wet weather facility charge on Alameda and Contra Costa counties 2023 to 2024 property tax rolls. The public hearing is now open. This is a public hearing to consider objections and protests to EBMUD's written report describing each parcel of real property subject to the wet weather facility charge and amounts of the wet weather facility charge to be imposed on each parcel for the Alameda and Contra Costa counties fiscal year 2023 to 2024 property tax rolls. Written protests must have been mailed and received by the district before the close of this public hearing. Madam Secretary, have any written objections or protests been submitted that must be read as part of the public hearing? I have not received any written protests for this matter. Amit Madsudi, Director of Wastewater, will give a presentation on the wet weather facilities charge, and then we will take public comments or prote uh, protests. Thank you, President Katz and the Board of Directors. Uh, today, we're seeking approval from the board for collecting the wet weather related charges on property tax rolls. Uh, next slide. Give us, it's not, give us one moment, Amit. Okay. There you go. You should, you should be able to drive. Okay. We're going to move that. Um, we're going to move this up to the right. There you go. Thank you. First, a brief uh, background on our collection system. It consists of 1,600 miles of sanitary sewer pipes collection system in forms of uh, pipes, manholes, laterals, trunks, interceptor sewers. And it comes from uh, multiple cities like Oakland, Piedmont, Berkeley, Albany. And all of the sewer system comes into our interceptors, which are four interceptors to the north, to the south, and uh, one from the Berkeley coming on Adeline and one from Alameda, it's called Alameda Interceptors. Uh, combination of all these sanitary sewer collection systems serves about 750,000 people um, in the East Bay, and also we operate 30 pump stations, 30 miles of, I'm sorry, 30 miles of large diameter sewer pipes and 16 pump stations. Most of the pipes flows by gravity. Just wanted to give you a background, but I'm gonna go into the next slides to uh, talk about wet weather impacts. Uh, most of the sewer pipes are gravity, and there is, they are not high pressure, so there's a lot of opportunities for the water to get in. During dry weather, sewers get generated from homes, domestic uses, industrial um, uses, and commercials. They get into the wastewater collection system and gets into our main wastewater treatment plant, and it gets treated uh, com uh, with a secondary complete treatment, and some of it goes to the, our recycled water system. 
we receive about 50 MGD during dry weather. During wet weather, it becomes very dif uh, different. Because of the inflow and infiltration system into our collection system from our wet weather events, we can get up to 14 times than the average flow that we get in the summertime. And um, it could be, it, it, it becomes overwhelming for our main wastewater treatment plant to treat. So that's why we have uh, what we call wet weather, peak wet weather treatment facilities, where it does not get the same level of treatment, uh, secondary treatment like the main wastewater treatment plant, but it does get treatment for primary and uh, disinfection and, uh, and, and dechlorination. Did I skip a slide? Wet weather facilities charges have been collecting since 1987. That's about 33.4 million um, on, the, on our, um, on our um, annual budget. That comes from just wet weather to learn. It's about 20% of our total revenue. And we get the, uh, the tax from 177,000 properties. The, uh, mod, uh, actually, this health and safety codes gives us the authority to collect the charges on property tax. Um, that, uh, that is also allowed under the MUD Act. Here's how we calculate the, proper, uh, the uh, wet weather charges. It's in three different categories uh, based on the lot size. The volume of wet weather flows that enters into our wastewater system um, with uh, collection system, each property, it's supposed to be proportional to the, uh, to the flow that it comes into this collection system. So that's how we have determined the, uh, the property taxes based on the lot size. Procedural requirements. First, we have to follow uh, these steps. First, we prepare the, the, uh, the, and file the written report with the secretary of the district. Next, we'll publish the notice of filing the report and public hearing. And, and then also we'll publish, uh, it, it's in the newspaper. Today is the public hearing. And if there is no majority protest to the report, then we'll seek vote for the approval. Finally, after the vote gets approval, we will file the appropriate report, approved report with the county auditor uh, controllers by August 10th. So here's the timeline of activities I just mentioned. <coughs> Rates for the water and wastewater, which were subject to Prop 218 hearing, were approved by the board on June 13th. Today's approval for hearing are putting the charges on the property taxes only. The written report recommends collecting wet weather facilities charges on 165,000 properties in Alameda County for a total of approximately 30.9 million and 12,656 properties in Contra Costa County for a total of 2.5 million. Public notices for collecting wet weather charges on property taxes were published in, news, uh, in Oakland Tribune and uh, Contra Costa Times for about two weeks. Again, today is the public hearing and board approval. After the board approval, we'll file the report with the county auditor and the wet controllers before August 10th. So here's our recommendation for the board to approve today. Adopt the report by at least two-thirds of the members of the board. Authorize the district to collect the fiscal year 24 wet weather facilities charges on the property tax rolls for Alameda and Contra Costa counties. Authorize district staff to adjust the fiscal year 24 wet weather facilities charges for any affected parcels as new information is provided by the counties. Direct the secretary of the district to file a copy of the report with Alameda County Auditor Controller and the Central Contra Costa, um, Contra Costa County Auditor Controller. That concludes my presentation. Thank and you very much. Happy to take any questions. We have a question from Director Young. Yeah, I just have one um, question back on the slide about who we collect the charges from, or how many households we or properties we collect the. Yeah, don't. Uh, oh, I guess that's two, uh, two times three. So uh, uh, we have about 600,000 
people that we serve? On the 750. 740. So is that just, uh, I, I guess I'm, I, I thought it would be more properties than that, but not. It's on the lot size, uh, property parcels. Okay. Maybe you're th uh, thinking. Oh, so if we add areas. in apartments and other things, that's still one property. Okay. All right. For uh, properties that uh, are one part, well, uh, one building and one uh, lot, but uh, multiple subdivided parcels, how, how is that uh, calculated? I believe that's per. It's by parcel number? It's by parcel number. Okay. That's all. Uh, oh, so the um, if if we have a, um, for example, a, like like a, a a twenty a twenty unit building, the, do each 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 does each unit um, pay the the same charge? Uh, uh, within each parcel faces. Yeah, if it's a condominium building and they each have their own parcel number, they're charged the lowest charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and I mean, an apartment I, building would be a single charge. Right. Yeah, I think that's an interesting um, uh, disparity to consider when we do cost of service uh, analysis. Um, but this is our current. You know, this is what's supported by our current analysis and our current rates and charges. So uh, we will. Uh, and are there any other questions before we proceed? Well, and it, it, uh, no, no. Okay. Um, so we will now hear from the public. Please do not provide identifying information, uh, such as address or phone number. If this information is needed after your comments, you'll be directed to contact staff. Is there anyone in attendance that wishes to object or protest the actions being considered by the board? Uh, seeing none in the room, Madam Secretary, are there any speakers online? There are no speakers online. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Moved by Director Patterson, seconded by Director Linney. Roll call. Director Chan. Aye. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz. Yes. The public hearing is now closed. The district has 177,708 parcels that are subject to the wet weather facilities charge in the amounts listed in the report. Uh, Madam Secretary, how many uh, valid protests have we received? Staff has advised we've received zero valid protests. Thank you. Then the secretary of the district has advised that the district received zero valid protests from the record owners of parcels listed in the report and upon which the wet weather facilities charge is proposed to be collected on the property tax rolls. Based on the number of valid protests submitted prior to the close of the public hearing, a majority protest does not exist for the adoption of the report. Accordingly, the protest may be adopted and the wet weather facilities charge may be collected on the fiscal year 2023 to 24 property tax rolls of the Alameda and Contra Costa counties for EBMUD's fiscal year 2024 upon approval by the board. Uh, we will now move to agenda items 10.2A through 10.2C. 10.2A is to adopt the written report and authorize the district to collect the fiscal year 2024 wet weather facilities charge on the Alameda and Contra Costa counties property tax rolls by at least two thirds of the members of the board. May I have a motion and second to approve item 10.2A? I'll move. I'll second. Moved by Director Young and seconded by Director Linney. Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz. Yes. Motion passes. Item 10.2B is to authorize district staff to adjust the fiscal year 2024 wet weather facilities charge for any affected parcels as new information is provided by the counties. 
And uh, may I have a motion and a second to approve item 10.2B? So moved. Second. Moved by Vice President McIntosh and seconded by Director Linney. Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. And uh, the, the last item in this process, you know, that is, you know, a state mandated process to protect the public and ensure transparency is uh, to direct the secretary of the district to file a copy of the report on or before August 10th, 2023 with the Alameda County Auditor Controller and the Contra Costa County Auditor Controller may I have a motion and a second to approve item 10.2C. So moved. Second. Moved by Vice President McIntosh and seconded by Director Young. Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman? Yes. Director Lenny? Yes. Director McIntosh? Yes. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. And we will now move to director uh, to determination and discussion. The next item is legislative update. Mr. General Manager. Yes, we have Kathy Viatella, our Manager of Legislative Affairs, and Debbie Michael, our Special Assistant, to provide the update. Um, we'll start with Debbie to do an update on S-2162, which the uh, committee this morning in LegHR unanimously supported. Debbie. Thank you. Uh, President Katz and members of the board, Debbie Michael, Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, uh, nice you to see you. Put it down. Pull both yeah. of them down. Okay, so we have uh, one federal bill for position today um, that was unanimously approved coming out of Ledge HR this morning. We are recommending a support position on S2162 by Senator Feinstein. This is the Support to Rehydrate the Environment, Agriculture, and Municipalities Act, or the STREAM Act. The board supported Senator Feinstein's previous iteration of the STREAM Act last year in June of 2022. The goal of this bill is to provide additional funding to modernize water infrastructure and increase water supply storage in California and the Western United States in preparation for the impacts of climate change. This year's bill is very similar to last year's effort and we recommend a support position based on the continued opportunities in this year's bill um, that could, this year's bill could bring. One particular focus area I'd like to highlight uh, S-2162 expands the competitive grant program established by the bipartisan infrastructure law for multi-benefit projects to improve watershed health and increases the total funding uh, from 100 million to 150 million over a five-year period, fiscal year 2025 through 2029. This grant program recognizes projects that provide enhancement of commercial, recreational, subsistence, or tribal ceremonial fishing in addition to other benefits. So in addition to continuing to recognize the importance of fisheries, like the McCombly River fishery that enhance commercial and recreational fishing, this bill also provides increased funding opportunities. I'll just highlight a few of those quickly. So it would authorize additional funds for the Bureau of Reclamation's program to provide drinking water assistance to disadvantaged communities. This is on top of amounts included in the Inflation Reduction Act. It would increase funding authorizations for water recycling and desalination infrastructure grant programs and extend certain authorizations uh, in the WIN Act for various projects. So I'm happy to answer questions. We'd recommend a support today. Director Yale. Um, so th this um, water Christmas tree is what I'm going to call it, um, uh, you know, has many laudable uh, objectives and goals. I am quite concerned about the streamlining of environmental review that uh, was referred to in the um, ledge report. I haven't read through the whole bill to understand exactly what that means, but um, that is a concern for me because I, as uh, if something is good for us to do, it should be able to pass muster on environmental review as it as currently, um, you know, uh, provides. And I just I don't support, uh, uh, you know, skirting uh, ESA or other uh, environmental review. 
Director Young, I can I can try and address that. So uh, as far as we can tell, there's no expediting under NEPA or CESA or any of the What does it mean, though? Yeah, so there are provisions in the bill that would allow the Department of Interior to select projects based on certain criteria rather than to go through the congressional approval process, basically earmarks, which can sometimes slow down based on, you know, whatever is happening in Congress at the moment. So the, the um, particular uh, programs that we're talking about are those that have already existed. There's criteria in place. Actually, the stream bill puts in more stringent criteria to focus on public benefits like environmental benefits and multi-benefit so that the Department of Interior would have to consider those as part of. So it's, it's really giving Interior a little bit more um, power to approve and not hold up money for certain infrastructure projects rather than circumventing environmental uh, processes. Um, I don't... Uh... I appreciate that, if that's, in fact, the case. Um, uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to vote on this until I can, if I could get a little bit more detailed explanation of, of how that would work. Um, uh, I'd appreciate it, but I, I'm not going to. Yeah, and this is. I, I can't, I don't think I'm, I'm prepared to to support this at this point, this is, so so, especially since it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I, in my view, I can't imagine that this is, you know, going to make it through. So we could provide more information just on what that streamlining encompasses, um, as Debbie is talking about, really, for the Department of Interior versus to bypass environmental roles. Sure. Director Coleman? Um, I think what's important also I mean, I do support the bill, um, but to find out what projects in our service area, primarily of country, obviously, would be, could be beneficial in receiving funds from this, whether it be forestry, water quality, uh, sediment in the water, so things of that nature that we potentially could receive uh, that we need work done on that would not necessarily be coming out of ratepayer funds at 100%. So I think that's important to look at the big picture for our service area, including the upper McCullough watershed. Director uh, Coleman, if I, if I could, one of the things that I think we've specifically called out is those provisions on ecosystem restoration right. grants with the, the language that supports commercial and recreational fisheries. So that's, that's been important to maintain that language statutorily. That's, and so that grant program would get additional funding under this bill and be expanded in criteria. So that would be an option. And I know from an UMRA standpoint, that's in a very important area uh, from our partners in Amador, Calaveras, and Alpine counties. Yeah, and that's so, sometimes with uh, uh, on the same topic that Director Coleman is raising, um, uh, Mr. General Manager, I, I was going to respond to Director Young. Uh, please go, go ahead. On, go ahead. Uh, so just on the on the issue of. Um, the streamlining, I, I believe I've identified the section that, that's of concern. I, I find this on page 1163 of the packet, uh, which is labeled page 69 of the bill. And it, it, it describes identification of eligible projects and, and what the, you know, the secretary shall identify eligible projects. And it continues and then to, to also issue a request for proposals and then um, provides for certification authority of the secretary. And on the following page, um, on page 70 of the bill, page 1164 of our packet, it, it, it says, under effect, nothing in this section authorizes the secretary to waive the, ob the obligations of the secretary under NEPA or the ESA or the Federal Water Pollution Control Act or any other uh, provision of federal environmental law. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I just stumbled upon this, you know, scrolling through the bill. It, it is entirely possible that in this long bill that there's another provision that, that does something um, uh, to the contrary of this in another context. So um, I, I'm, I'm very attentive to that and would, you know, would, would want to, you know, remove uh, support if, if the bill, you know, or I would seriously consider that if um, the, the, we, we found that that was an effect of the bill. Um, I, I, I do think that it benefits the district to 
um, support legislation that includes uh, uh, projects in, in a package. You know, I, I don't think it means that we um, are, are implying support for every uh, component of, of the package. And, but, but I do think that waiving federal environmental law would, would uh, be of harm to the district. We, we, uh, it's very much in the district's interests, uh, not, not just our morals, but, but the actual uh, water supply interests of the district to have federal environmental law maintained intact. I'm wondering and, if we could just put this over until August, till our August meeting. Does that timing work, Debbie? Um, there's, uh, I believe that the bill has been set for hearing um, on July 19th. That's breaking news, just happened a few minutes ago. To address Director Young's earlier point, there's uh, some estimation that this bill could be rolled into a larger omnibus spending package on the Senate side, hence the importance of, of the, getting the funding and the programs right I can't predict the future. What, so as part of the debt ceiling vote? No. So, so the, no. as the two houses continue to you know, formulate their spending plans and have those discussions, um, this, this as, as a, a Western Water Bill could be included in such discussions. So, so the, uh, I, I asked whether there was a, a list of known support and opposition, and there wasn't any. So I'm I'm just kind of wondering, you know, if it's so important for us to have a position on this by next week, and there's nobody else. I mean, it, uh, it, timing wise, I, I, I was going to just say that, that uh, I always feel more comfortable when uh, I can see a list of of organizations who are for or against, presumably who have also studied this, perhaps even in more detail than we have, but certainly from different perspectives, and that, that tells me a lot too. So uh, if there's not such a list, um, I, mean, I was going to request that, that we hold this over till I can see something like that, but I'm wondering, is there... So, have other groups taken positions and we just haven't? So used? other water utilities have weighed in support. There isn't an official list because the, the bill is still waiting to be published on the website. It was introduced by Senator Feinstein on June 22nd. So oh, it's in so its, it's very fast, early yeah. stages, yeah. right, Of and there will be hearings. Um, so an official list isn't available because of that Good. process happening. So it, it's not... So, it's not because of anything other than, than just right. how the publishing process works for bills at the federal level. I, I would support holding holding position. Director Coleman? Position. I'm sorry, Doug, you support what? I would support holding or, or not, not taking a position at this time well, myself. I agree. Okay. Well, I prefer that we take a position, but that I may be on the losing end of such a vote. I know we discussed it, but not in that kind of detail this morning. Mm -hmm. Ledge HR. I know Senator Feinstein's been a great advocate for our issues, and um, I would like us to be on record. But if there's not four votes, there are not four votes. I don't know. I can count three no's based I, on comments. I'm, I'm all for going forward, but you know, I, I prefer to defer to my colleagues who would just like a bit more information, and I think that's. Um, being respectful, I want them to do the same thing if I had concerns. So okay, I'm, I'm willing to wait. Director Patterson? Well, one of the things that we talked about this morning is that this is a supplemental bill. It really adds on to a bill already approved, and it had those approvals in it. I don't see it in the documentation, but if you read in the nomenclature in the back of the bill, you'll see that. And so uh, it was based on that that I took a position on it this morning because all the things you're asking about are covered in the prior. This adds $100 million on to what's already been approved. And so uh, are we saying, does that change our position on the first uh, passage that we supported? 
not for the committee. It's just yeah. now they're bringing it to the full board. The committee had recommended it, but if the full board doesn't support it, then that's how it moves. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's important to say we're not saying that we're opposed to the bill. Right. Um, or just saying, I mean, I've heard kind of conflicting things that it's very early in the process. Um, because the bill was just introduced, or but oh, but there's hearings, and the, you know, so uh, it's like uh, I can't imagine that waiting until August 8th to take a position on the bill will, you know, either, uh, you know, uh, annoy uh, Senator Feinstein or, you know, put us at the back of the list or, you know, anything. Um, you know, like that. I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm asking for additional clarification and information. Doug's asked for additional information. Um, uh, Can I? Seems, uh, you know, direct, Yeah, well, there. after yep. Director Young finishes, we'll, we'll take Director Chan and then Director Coleman. Director Young? I'm done. Director Chan? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I do think that there's time for us to get the information to Director Linney and to Director Young before we take a stand on this. I think it does make sense for us to wait until there's a higher level of comfort amongst the directors. So I don't feel comfortable voting on it right now myself. Director Coleman. No, I agree. We're beating this like a dead horse, of whatever that term is. <laughs> um, I know. We need, we need to get more information. Perhaps Eric back in D.C. can get some clarification for the next meeting so we can have those answers and hopefully provide support on it then. Okay. Uh, just to speak for myself, I, I do... Um, you know, I, I, I do regret that we are, don't have enough information to feel fully comfortable to take action today. It, it's... I, I'm, I'm much less familiar with the federal uh, uh, legislative process compared to the state of California, as, and I think that, that may be similar for many members of the board. And the, the, my, my, my understanding is that the, the first hearing is the primary opportunity uh, for supporters to express their view and that, you know, markup would happen after that. But really, legislation happens behind the scenes. These mm -hmm. days, legislation really happens behind the scenes, and members uh, work uh, uh, very much behind the scenes to, to log roll legislation together into to, to fewer pieces of legislation that, that receive parallel titles. And, you know, that that's, that doesn't necessarily mean that what, what, what will happen here. Um, things have changed a lot in the last decade in terms of the process, uh, but the you know from from looking through this, I, I, I see a lot of uh, reassurances that there is maintenance of uh, uh, environmental law as as represented by staff. But I, I think it, it is it is important that we get a um, an analysis that just that says so that that just makes sure that we know that we've read it. You know. Um, front to back and that we're, we're very sure. Um, I think that that would make us feel comfortable. If, um, you know, if, if there was another report that really did, you know, indicate that this is going to provide a loss of confidence in the district support, you know, for, for working with uh, the Congress, that, that could change my view. But, but it, it, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're able to um, continue our lobbying efforts through our, our representative in, in, uh, in the Capitol uh, and through our delegation, and uh, be able to consider this in, in August. Um, is there any feedback from staff about those considerations before we? We are happy to to provide the, the information that's that's missing, and we'll have the benefit of, of the first hearing. Thank you for yeah, um, yeah responding to us. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Good afternoon, President Katz, uh, members of the board. Um, I will try to be brief in my legislative updates. Um, it's nice to be before you. A lot has happened um, in the last month. I'm getting a little bit of an echo, but you're not getting that up there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Risha. Um, so um, this is the last week in the legislature for policy committee hearings. 
um, for bills that are in their second house. And in order for them to stay active and move on to the floor towards the end of session, um, they had to be voted out of their policy committees. So I just wanted to give you a couple of updates um, on the policy bills that we had opposed unless amended positions on because as you recall at the last board meeting, there were four. So they were the two water rights bills, AB 460 by Assemblymember um, Bauer Cahan and then um, AB 1337 by Assemblymember Wicks. Um, AB 460 you heard um, during the public comment um, by Mr. Albert. Um, that bill actually was heard on June, or was scheduled for hearing on June 27th in the Assembly, sorry, in the Senate Natural Resources and Water Committee. Um, we had been having discussions with the author's office about our position and our recommended amendments. Those amendments were referred in the committee analysis, but then the bill was pulled from the committee before the hearing because the author did not have the votes to get it out um, because of the opposition. So that is now made a two-year bill um, and can come back next year and need to be acted upon in January. Um, AB 1337, the Wix bill that dealt with the curtailments, um, unfortunately met the same fate, um, and that was yesterday. Um, we had been having constructive um, conversations with that author's office as well. Um, the bill was scheduled for hearing yesterday in Senate Natural Resources and Water, um, and she too pulled it because it did not have the votes and it's now a two-year bill. So similarly, it would have to come back in January to be continued on uh, next year in the second year of the legislative session. So that is the update on both of those. You did hear from Mr. Albert about a bill that I had briefed you on very early in the year, SB 389. Um, that is a bill we did not have a position on, we did not have concerns with. That was a bill by uh, Senator Allen. Um, that is being heard today. I don't know its fate. I believe, I would suspect it got out of committee. There was a lot of work done on that bill. That's a bill that basically gives the board the ability to investigate all water rights, regardless you know, of the date of your right. Um, and then to uh, gives the board the authority to issue an information order to actually collect information from the water right holder to determine and verify their rights. And if they are found to be um, illegally diverting or, or taking water that's unauthorized, then it gives the board you know, direction to go to another section of the code to pursue enforcement um, and considers it a trespass. So that bill had a lot of amendments made to it through the process by the opposition um, working with the author's office and we, we did not have concerns with that. We continued to follow that. So um, I'll provide you an update uh, next month on the status of that bill where it is. Um, so any questions on the water rights bills before I proceed? I, think we, I have a question. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Director um, Chan. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I guess this question probably is for Clifford. Clifford, I am just wondering if anybody has say has um, challenged our water rights recently. <laughs> Mike, maybe you're better prepared to answer that question. <laughs> Twenty minutes or less. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't say uh, challenge is the proper word, but we've certainly had water rights disputes with other water rights holders. Um, most recently, with Woodbridge Irrigation District, but there are some other instances where we're actively talking with other stakeholders and other water rights holders about. Um, different opinions and uh, potential, trying to resolve potential disputes before they get to the stage of litigation as it, as it did with Woodbridge. And I can, you, can you characterize those disputes as major disputes? Or no, I, Woodbridge was such, uh, uh, but the others are, I would not uh, characterize them as major disputes. They are at the point of disagreements, and we're in discussions, and we hope to resolve those issues before they become more significant. And putting Thank aside you. our interests uh, in riparian rights that we've discussed and that has been the subject of most of the uh, discussion around the package, and you know, in, in addition to our um, procedural uh, concerns with the bills as originally drafted, have we had challenges to our riparian rights in the last decade or, or two? Uh, um, I'll just say no. Um, but we, uh, th thank you. And it, what, what, what I did want, uh, Director Chan, did you have anything further on, on the package? Thank you. Uh, I, I did want to ask for, 
uh, staff to just comment. We, we did have a, a, a comment during public comment on non-agenda items that I think touched on some of the issues uh, related to the, to the water rights package. Uh, I would like staff to just walk, walk us through, especially if the member of the public is still uh, with us, because we, we did adopt a uh, opposing less amended position that uh, was very narrow, in my view, to, to help the, the legislature uh, come up with a, a process that would protect the due process rights of water rights holders, but allow for the intent of uh, the, uh, the, the, the individual legislators and the, the sponsor to still uh, achieve some of the, the goals um, that I think would have still allowed the, uh, the, the interests um, communicated by the member of the public. Um, that, that's my understanding of, of the issues and that we, we were very um, narrow in the amendments that we requested that would have allowed us to remove our opposition. And we might even uh, have been able to entertain support if those bills were proceeding. You know, uh, so I, I, uh, that's, that's my understanding of the, the, the narrow opposed and less amended position that we took. Um, do you have any further comment about the, the, those, those principles that, that we were focused on? No, that is correct, um, President Katz. Um, first off, I did have an opportunity to speak with Mr. Albert yesterday. Um, he had contacted the district, um, and I spoke with him, and I shared a copy of our report um, from last month and described that we were focused on AB 460 on a very narrow, sort of narrowing on the bill to be an enforcement bill. Um, to deal with situations like the Shasta case that he referenced, and also to reestablish due process. And then with AB 1337, our focus there was to limit the curtailment authority that the board had just to critically dry years, and that we were in support and favor of the approach that they were proposing to do a rulemaking. So we went through that over the phone. So I do think that is correct, your, your characterization of those bills. And as far as I can tell, we, you know, we, we provided a much more narrow way of, of addressing the concerns. And the amendments that uh, Assemblymember Wicks took really go uh, far beyond what, what we were asking for and appear to be uh, uh, looking to satisfy other opponents or other stakeholders you know, that were raising bigger concerns than ours. Yes, and that, that, was, that was a proposal that um, uh, Assemblymember Wicks was floating, uh, sort of trialing with the opposition, was never put into print, but was looking to go farther than even we were actually um, asking for in our amendments. So that's correct. Director Young? Uh, yeah, just... Um, Given that it's a two-year bill and we've got from, you know, now till January to, you know, sort of work with our delegation um, members, can you kind of posit what that might look like in terms of um, helping uh, some, at least some of the more progressive water <laughs> agencies to you know, sort of drop their op I mean, do you see a path forward for for one or both of these bills that would, you know, sort of satisfy our concerns and beef up um, enforcement against the scuff laws uh, out there? So I, I believe there's an opportunity, um, I think, at, at the end of session <laughs> right now, there's, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of attention on a lot of bills still at the moment, but I think over the fall recess, the interim recess, I think we could continue to have conversations with the authors. I think there are some other um, water agencies um, potentially that may be able to move in a more positive direction. I think these bills just needed more time to have those constructive conversations. And that was particularly true um, with Assembly Member Wick's Bill 1337 and talking with her staff. She, they just felt there wasn't enough time to address the complicated nature of, of these issues and what they were trying to achieve. So I'm optimistic that we could do that. Um, and we'll check back in with the authors and see where they are during the intercession recess. Director, President Katz, we have one hand, I believe, for public comment. Yes, uh, please announce the name. Okay. H.L. I have the initials H.L. You have your hand up. Please go ahead and announce your name. You should be able to unmute your mic. Um, okay, they took their hand down. 
Um, I just wanted to make one more comment, um, Director Young. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak with one of the sponsors of the bill um, yesterday as well and, and invited them to sort of sit down with us along with some of the other environmental groups too to have a co constructive conversation with them. And they were appreciative of how we have been constructive in this process as well. Really glad to hear about those conversations. Um, okay, I just want to touch on uh, two other bills. Um, so we took opposed and less amended positions on um, AB 754. These are both bills by Assembly Member Papin, a new member um, who was from uh, San Mateo, the peninsula. And AB 754 is a water management planning bill that's trying to deal with water shortages, and it was the one that was required us to develop this water storage shortage curve and then plot against that monthly, and then it would have triggered action, conservation actions. They took out the conservation action triggers from the bill, so now the bill is really a bill that would require us to develop that curve and then incorporate that into our water shortage contingency plan and then do these monthly reports. But again, it still doesn't address our concerns about the fact that um, that's not how we manage our system on a single reservoir basis. We look at total storage. So I'm having conversations with staff on Friday in her office to continue to have a discussion. The bill passed out of Senate Natural Resources and Water yesterday on a party line vote. Um, it goes straight to the floor. It does not go to appropriations. But it's good news that we st still have this um, line of communication with the author's office and also with the sponsors, Coast Keeper, to see if we can come to some resolution of our concerns. Um, and then on AB 755, the news is better. Um, this is the bill that would require, that was focused on water service and the cost of service analysis and was trying to report on those 10% of the highest water users and what that cost the district. And we had concerns about Prop 218 liability. Um, we've been working with a group of water agencies and, and CMUA to try to find a path forward there. The author's office did take amendments. Those are not in print yet. They were for, um, considered yesterday in the Senate Natural Resources and Water Committee. And we all kind of moved to a position of being tweeners, is what we call that on the bill, saying that once those are in print, we would be able to lift our opposition. We're still having a conversation just to make a small correction to the bill that addresses the liability issue, but I think that's going in the right direction. And that one, too, will go straight to the floor. So that is an update on those four bills. So very quickly, I don't, um, I don't have a lot of time. I think some other big news, they're going to be going out on recess um, starting uh, this Friday, and they'll be out till August 14th. We did have a leadership change. You may have heard about it. So the leadership changed over from uh, Speaker Rendon over to Speaker Rivas. Um, and we're going to see a turnover, um, I think, in, in his office in terms of who's working for him. Some of you may know Alf Brandt. Um, he's no longer with the speaker. Um, he has moved on, so they're hiring, and they'll bring in a new person who'll be focused on water and parks. Um, and then they're bringing in a new person who will be focused on climate. Um, and then there's not been very much change. There's been some small changes in terms of the committees, but I would expect we'll continue. We'll see as the year or the session goes on towards the end of session, they will very likely make some changes to the chairs of the committees and also to the membership. But they're not going to do anything right now, and he stated that. Um, when he was sworn in, basically they don't want to disrupt, you know, this year. So, but we would we would look for those changes that will be coming. Um, and then just to talk a little bit about on the federal side, they came back from their uh, July recess. They're in session now until the August recess. Really, they are focusing, as Debbie had pointed out, on spending and the appropriations bills. Um, the House Appropriations Committee completed their markup of the 2024 Energy and Water Development Appropriation, and we had actually put in a community project request um, through Barbara Lee's office, um, and she picked it up, um, which is for $2.5 million, drawing down from our WRDA, or WERDA, authorization. That was for $25 million. We're pulling down on that again for $2.5 million for part of the East Bayshore project um, to build a pipeline sort of from Oakland over the estuary to Alameda that would be supporting recycled water. Um, that is in the package right now, in that spending package. And so depending on sort of the fate of the spending bills right now, whether that gets through, um, it looks pretty good for us on that community uh, develop, um, the community project. Um, so um, there has been no action so far on the US EPA spending bills that would deal with interior and environment. Um, but we anticipate that that will some occur sometime before the end of July. So what it means is essentially the House is going to take action on all 12 spending bills. Um, 
but it's probably not going to happen until September when they come back from the August recess. Um, however, that being said, they could take action um, on the energy and water possibly before the August recess, so possibly in the next couple of weeks. Um, the Senate Appropriations is slated to consider their energy and water um, development water bill at the end of the month. But again, there's no date for any action on the US EPA spending bills. So spending, and this is to your point, um, Director Young, spending will be at a level that was agreed to under the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So that was the bill that dealt with. They've already adopted that, the debt ceiling. Um, and as you know, the House Republicans kind of had rejected that deal that was struck with the White House. Um, House GOP leaders have cut tens of billions from, this, um, from social spending already that would result in some draconian cuts. Um, and it totals about $120 billion, and that's going to come out of the domestic spending programs. So what all of this is kind of signaling is that the House, the Senate, and the White House really have a, an enormous challenge in front of them in trying and developing a final set of spending bills before the end of you know, the fiscal year, before September 30th. So Republicans are floating around some ideas about you know, passing a stopgap spending bill before the August recess that would carry us you know, through to December 31, 2023. And this would allow some more time to negotiate what would be a final omnibus spending bill um, to avoid kind of the 1% trigger cuts that are part of that um, Fiscal Responsibility Act. So that is kind of an update on where things are right now on the federal side and on the state side. And um, we're going to get a little bit of a break and a breather, and then we'll come back um, and run things through on the state side until the end of session on September 24th. Thank you, Director Sorry, Chan. September 14th. Uh, I just wanted to clarify. So Congresswoman Lee um, is is looking to give us 6.5 million. To to she's she has actually um, sponsored our community project request for 2.5 million for recycled water. Hey. Wasn't there a project before for almost four point, or is it the same project? Um, it's all within the East Bayshore project, but it was a different component, and that was for four point two million. Okay, so it is the four point two plus the two million. Yes, and we already got the four point two, and so this is a okay. new this is a new appropriation request in the in the FY twenty twenty four appropriations. Well, I mean, she's showing up for us. Yes, and we're very appreciative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that completes my report, unless you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Finally, thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Debbie. Finally attached is the monthly report, as well as the forecast and summary for board and committee workshops for 2023. Any questions on the general manager's report? If the board is so willing, it is possible that we might be able to uh, move back to the minutes and I think we, we did have some impressive multitasking occur. Uh, and I would um, uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes with uh, the amendment uh, under item 16, director comments, that Director Chan reported she will be traveling and these words will be inserted on a delegation with the United States Department of State. And that's the insertion. Um, director Chan, does that work for you? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, that, so the, the words would be inserted uh, between traveling during the July 11th, 2023 board meetings. So after the word traveling, it would state mm -hmm. on a delegation with the United States Department of State. Oh, on an American delegation. Yeah, I think, I think. Uh, the, Is that the, okay? I mean, I know it's implied, but I would really appreciate it if it was inserted. It is implied. It is implied. Uh, so uh, are you uh, comfortable with the language that the secretary took from the transcript or would we, should we reword it? I'm only asking, um, I, I'm only asking you to insert American delegate, that's all. And then uh, the rest of the language should be fine. Okay, yeah, I, I, in my view, American delegation is synonymous with- um, It's, it's implied, I understand. Yeah, uh, I understand, but to be clear. I hate to be a little bit of a stickler, but the transcript is the transcript, and we don't get to elaborate on things that weren't stated that, and I appreciate what you're doing, Director Chan, 
Um, however, it's not what was stated in the meeting, and the minutes are about the meeting. So I just, okay, I, so I just feel like it opens it just opens a door to to uh, I understand minutes okay. iterations that are not you know so, it's a slippery slope so I, I guess is what I'm saying. So that's fine. I think what I'll do is I'll restate it in my director comments. Uh, today, okay, and that'll be fine. Uh, would, would you okay. like Would you like to insert those words that uh, we did find from the transcript uh, when amending yes. the minutes today? Okay, so th so I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the minutes uh, uh, from our last meeting under item number one um, to insert the words after traveling to insert the words on a delegation with the United States Department of State, and otherwise the minutes are the same. With that I'll, insertion. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Roll call. Director Chan? Yes. Director Coleman has left the meeting. Director Linney? Yes. Director McIntosh has left the meeting. Director Patterson? Yes. Director Young? Yes. President Katz? Yes. Minutes are approved. And we are on committee reports. The minutes from the June 27th, 2023 Sustainability Committee and Finance Administration Committees were included in the agenda materials. We will now receive our, an update from this morning's Planning Committee and Legislative Human Resources Committee meetings. Director Linney. All right. This morning we heard two items. One was on the pipeline rebuild. Uh, and uh, the short version is that uh, we are on schedule and um, talked a little bit about the different types of pipe materials used for uh, where, uh, depending on where the pipes are uh, being replaced. Um, and then also had a, a, a nice discussion and update on the Center for Smart Infrastructure and all the great work that's being done there uh, and the other utilities who are uh, part of that. Uh, and then we also talked about the Los Vaqueros expansion project. Um, the uh, quick, quick notes there, uh, there'll be a vote coming up uh, at the next board meeting to consider the, um, uh, was it multi-party agreement number five, uh, which is basically an interim operating agreement. Uh, and then um, we will continue to have updates on other agreements as they come along. We had a discussion about off-ramps and how central a, a role uh, that East Bay MUDS partnership is in this project. Uh, and I, I thought the staff did a particularly good uh, job with, with some of the mapping and because and, I think it helped for me at least uh, the understanding of how, uh, how integral our role is for the success of the uh, the project. Thank you, Director Linney. Uh, direct, uh, Director Patterson, do you have anything to share about the Legislative Human Resources Committee meeting? Yes, Ledger HR met this morning. It uh, uh, had determination and discussion on the diversity, equity, and inclusion strategic plan update. It, that was an update. It received that report, and uh, the second part with the legislative update, primarily we had a discussion in the full board meeting here of the outcomes of that and the addition of the legislative issues of interest to East Bay Mud. Uh, that's the report. Thank you, Director Patterson. Uh, Please submit items for future consideration to the general manager. And thank you if you have already submitted your written director comments to the secretary. Are there any verbal director comments or reports? Um, yeah, I would. Director Young? Just like to um, briefly um, call everybody's attention to the art display, our first uh, gallery exhibit, I think, since the pandemic. Um, the uh, it's especially uh, East Bay Mud centric um, and happens to be actually uh, the, the photographer whose work is um, shown, Bobby Dietz, um, is someone who I've known actually for quite some time. And when I was first running for 
election, uh, she approached me at the family camp that we both um, have attended and said, you know what, I take pictures of these things. She started showing me on her phone and said, well, if, if I get elected, you should definitely, you know, put in for uh, showing in the gallery. And then I think she forgot about it. I sort of forgot about it. And then when the 100th anniversary um, came around uh, uh, and there was sort of a public call put out for um, exhibitors, um, she put her stuff in and, uh, you know, there it is out on, out on the second floor. So I encourage folks to take a look. There's some, you know, fun... Um, uh, you know, all of the phases of the East Bay mud uh, water caps and hydrants out there. Um, uh, so uh, she's going to have a reception, I think, next week. I'm not sure what the date and time is, but, um, you know, if you'd like to meet her and find out more about her work, um, I'm sure people would appreciate it. Um, I also had uh, the opportunity to... Um, uh, for East, for between our last meeting and this meeting, uh, participated in the Urinda Fourth of July parade. Um, lots of hoots and hollers for uh, East Bay mud and our water. Um, got to ride in the Ranger truck, which was fire truck, which was fun. Um, not as much fun as performing in the band uh, in Alameda. Um, uh, and then um, also followed that on with a um, a hike yesterday with uh, uh, Mayor. Um, Miller of Orinda uh, to talk about different, um, you know, watershed uh, issues and the possibility of a trail, which I don't think works out, but um, uh, just a couple things. Thank you, Director Young. Director Chan. Uh, oh, Dir Director Chan. We're in uh, comments, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, First comment, two weeks ago, I um, I visited the upcountry facilities, the ranger station at the fish hatchery and uh, Freeport. And I was, I have to say, I was really enamored with Freeport. Um, but I had an extended time with the staff and um, I really enjoyed myself. And I know that they would really welcome other board members coming up and seeing um, kind of what our spectacular facilities up there. So um, that's my first comment. The second one is I am having a very good time um, bragging about our water quality here in Africa. And um, I'll, you know, talking about the Freeport facility, maybe that's something that could be implemented. I'm not sure, but um, I'm very proud to represent the United States government. I'm very proud to be here and talk about uh, the amazing work that East Bay Mud does as well. Thank you, Director Chan. Director Linney. Uh, so I thought I would just, uh, at, at Marguerite's prompting, uh, the 4th of July parade was was fun. And uh, uh, kind of what Director Chan was saying, too, in a in a odd way, also get to brag about East Bay Mud by being in the parade and uh, having our 100th anniversary uh, banner on the side, a lot of pos very positive uh, 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 feedback from the crowd, uh, and it certainly wasn't for the music because uh, <laughs> we're not that good. Uh, but uh, it was fun, and I want to give a shout out to TJ, our driver. Uh, very fun getting a chance to, to uh, talk with him uh, to and for the to and from the parade route, uh, and to our general manager for helping uh, set it up as he has every year since he was. Uh, 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 before he was general manager, even. But anyway, thank you, everyone. It was a, it was really a great experience, and I think good good for East Bay Mud. May May I just add real quickly, Director Lenny? Did you see yourself on TV? Uh, a couple people sent some clips. It was interesting this year. Uh, <laughs> you know, the East Bay Mud checking. truck was featured in at least uh, Channel Two and Channel and Seven. <laughs> And a little bit of my singing, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we think we think that actually it was it was because we were playing "Twist and Shout," which was a, 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 a salute to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which in, in, the, in the parade there. I think that's why that got covered. But anyway, thank you. Any other further director comments? Okay. 
Uh, then that takes us to adjournment. Uh, the board meeting scheduled for July 25th are canceled, and the next regular meeting of the board will be held on Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 at 1.15 p.m. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>